Big crowd today. <laughs> we would do it in the Learning Commons, but since we're doing it during the day, I didn't want to upset the children that love to go in the Learning Commons. So that's why we're down here. But thank you everybody for coming today. Um, I'd like to take a moment to welcome all of you to the second Future Teacher Signing Day uh, here at Wakona, but the first one in, in several years. Our first signing day was held back in 2019 and was intended to be an annual event, but it was disrupted uh, for several years due to COVID. I feel like we've been saying that a lot lately and eventually won't have to say it anymore, but uh, we're happy to be reviving Future Teacher Signing Day this year, however. It's important to note that this ceremony is being conducted thanks to the encouragement we received from Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I do wanna give a brief shout out to the Director of Licensure for that department. His name's Brian Devine, and he's been very helpful in supplying uh, different sorts of resources uh, and materials for today's event. The purpose of this event is twofold. First, it's a fantastic opportunity to recognize some of our outstanding students in the class of 2023. And second, it's also the perfect opportunity for our, to help our state find the best and brightest of our high school graduates and help encourage them to get into the profession of teaching. This type of ceremony, and it will be a brief one, is most commonly used when a high school student signs to play a particular sport in college. And as important and rewarding as that is, the State Department of Education came to the realization that high school students who are intending on becoming educators deserve just as much, if not more, fanfare. As many of us know, the role of the educator in some ways has really become that of a shapeshifter. You need to, bond, uh, to, need to bend and twist to accommodate the ever-growing needs of your students, as well as live up to the varying initiatives that exist at the federal, state, and district level. But more importantly, to be a teacher means that you have the opportunity to impact the lives of children for many years to come. It is hard but rewarding work. Robert John Meehan once, once said that every day that you teach, you have two options. Be focused, passionate, and caring, or be focused, passionate, and caring. Before I introduce our next set of speakers, I would like to take a moment to thank certain folks in attendance today. First, I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to the families of our five students for taking the time out of their busy schedules to join us today. They will have busy schedules all next week, starting with the prom and senior activities leading up to graduation. I'd also like to thank our superintendent, Leslie Blake Davis, for being here today. She will be speaking a little bit later in the ceremony, but I'm deeply appreciative and our school is appreciative for her support uh, always, but in particular for this, this uh, today's event. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, one of our school committee members, uh, Dick Lacatel, for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Lacatel, for being here. And our state representatives, Lindsay Sabadosa, Smitty Pignatelli, and State Senator Paul Mark, who you will all hear from uh, in a moment as well. I thank them for being here. Um, I'd also like to extend my sincere thanks to all the staff members who are here today to support and celebrate our future colleagues. Before I introduce our students and they sign their letters of intent which sit before them, I would like to invite our Massachusetts State Representative Lindsay Sabadosa up to say a few words. We're very fortunate to have Representative Sabadosa to take the time out of her schedule to be with us today. And she represents one of our students uh, from the town of Cummington. And uh, if you all want to come up, that's yeah, fine we'll do too. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. All right, so we have Representative Sabadosa, Smitty Pignatelli, and Senator Paul Mark. All right. Still going first, <laughs> but. <laughs> You're doing that without a mic. I did it without a mic. You did it without a mic. All right, yeah. so I'll be loud. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I need to start off today by saying thank you for agreeing to sign this pledge to become a teacher. Um, I was thinking about what you must have been 
what your thought process was to get here today. And it occurred to me that you all must have really loved school, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> all right. I was wrong. Um, but it, it made me think about you know, what, what makes a good teacher and what makes a good experience through your educational careers. And I can, to this day, still list off every teacher I had from kindergarten to senior year of high school, which is how much I loved school. Um, and I can do that because those people were incredible. They were the people that made you feel at home. They were the people that got you excited about subjects that you really didn't want to be excited about. I don't know if you all took physics, but I did and was not excited. But you still um, <laughs> learned and you were inspired and you continued on in your careers because of those people. So you're not only signing up to be teachers, you're signing up to be mentors, to be shapeshifters, um, and to really inspire a whole new generation. So thank you for that. Well, that was brief, but I won't be brief. But um, really, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to be here. I'm very, very excited to join my wonderful colleagues uh, and to say congratulations and thank you to you guys. Um, I'm Smitty Pignatelli. I'm, Dalton is new to me uh, in this district, but I've been in the legislature for 21 years. I come from a family of school teachers, uh, very proudly. Uh, my mom was a, uh, she, she taught Latin, Spanish, French. Um, I had her in ninth grade, and full disclosure, it was the only class I ever got kicked out of. <laughs> it was ninth grade French by my own mother. Um, but I saw the power of a teacher. And my sister retired a couple years ago after 37 years of teaching first grade. The thing that I admire so much about teachers, um, my sister's very first first grade class, as a class, invited my sister to their high school graduation. So when Rep Savadosa talks about knowing every teacher that she had along the way, I think that's a powerful statement to say that this class thought enough of her 10, 11 years later to invite her to the graduation. I thought it was a powerful tool that she was able to instill on, on these young people. And I was with her the very last day after 37 years of teaching first grade, and I saw the sadness in the students to lose Mrs. Slazic, my sister, uh, as a teacher. So she empowered them and uh, teachers do some amazing work. Uh, my grandmother was the first female ever hired by Springfield College to be a student teacher. So the power of teaching is a, is a great gift. I think we have an obligation in the legislature to hopefully raise the salaries of school teachers uh, because of the important factor that you guys are gonna be dealing with. And I'll close with a, with a very personal story about my own daughter. Uh, my daughter was a very shy little girl um, she struggled with some reading comprehension. She had an IEP, I identified very early. But in middle school, she really dreaded going to school. She would cry in the morning to go to school. She would cry at the end of the day coming home from school. And I couldn't figure out and what was going on. Uh, but it was a teacher. It was a teacher in ninth grade that lit a fire in her. She loved going to school. She looked forward to going to school. And it was a teacher that inspired her. The only time she cried in her entire high school career was when school got called off or there were school vacations. She wanted to go to school. She's now in Hollywood working in television doing some amazing things, but I owe so much of it to those couple of teachers in high school that gave her that opportunity, that believed in her, encouraged her to do great things. That's what you folks are gonna be able to do. Uh, so don't ever take it for granted the, the power of a teacher, the impact that you can make, and the difference you're going to make in people's lives. So we have some work to do to make your lives a little bit better. So hopefully when you get out of college, because we're gonna definitely need teachers here all throughout Massachusetts. We're in desperate need of teachers, but we need to make it attractive. And I admire all five of you folks for, for having a signing day. And I think it's really special. My chief of staff, uh, Julie Murphy here, she had a signing day because she was a star pitcher. And she went to Providence College on a, on a uh, a, a pitching a softball scholarship. Um, she's now my chief of staff, and I'm very disappointed, but I'm very proud of her to announce that in the fall, she'd be going to work in the White House. Wow. So, oh, oh. Education, <laughs> education is so critically important, and you guys are there with these young kids 180 days a year. But believe me, you can make a big difference in people's lives. So take it seriously. You have my full support and admiration, so congratulations to you guys. And I look forward to what brings you in the future. Hopefully, you'll all be coming back to Wakona to be teaching, because I think we're going to need you here as well. But uh, congratulations and thank you for your good work. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm Paul Mark. I'm the state senator for all of the towns in the Central Berkshire Regional School District and 49 other communities in Berkshire, <laughs> Franklin, Hampshire, and Hamden <laughs> County. And what I always find amazing about Dalton specifically, which I've had the honor to represent for 12 years now, is that Dalton, like no other community, takes the time to recognize what is going on in this town and show how it is valued and encourage people to be the best that they can be. And so just taking the time to do this ceremony, to place such value on students who have obviously excelled here at the high school and will continue to excel into the future and help other students excel, I think says a lot about what this community is and what the values this community represents and our entire Hilltown region, of course. I was lucky enough I came to the first one. So I've been 100% of these. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I missed the, uh, the hiatus, obviously, like everybody else. And I remember thinking at the first one of these ceremonies, we do these for people going into athletics. And athletics are important. And we place a lot of value on a lot of industries. But I'll never forget once, I was in an airplane, a small airplane, like a bus with wings. And we're going through, and you can see where the pilot is sitting. You can see the front window. And we went through a cloud. And I couldn't see anything. And I realized that any time I've ever been on a plane and looked out the window and saw, oh, how pretty, we're going through the clouds, the pilot can't see anything. <laughs> and I thought, you know, we don't pay that person as much as we pay Tom Brady, or we pay Madonna, or we pay whatever. And valuing professions like teaching that are going to have an influence on people and generations for year to, years to come. What students in the future will learn from you will inspire them, will shape who they become, and their children and their grandchildren as well. And one of the most valuable things I get to do is once in a while I get to teach a class at MCLA. And it's amazing to have that impact, <clears throat> to have the ability to answer a question for someone, to connect with them, to have someone tell you afterwards, and you're all going to experience this someday, thank you. What you taught me was amazing and helped me is so much more value, valuable than, I think, any football game or any uh, rock concert. So thank you for choosing to go into this profession. I wish you the very best. Hopefully one of you will have gone to a school I went to so I can start clapping <laughs> when, when you announce all of that. And uh, just what a great day to be here. Congratulations, all of you. I do want to thank our two representatives and senator for being here today. They have busy schedules, but um, they all got back to us right away and, and said they would be here for this. And I think that um, speaks volumes about how they feel about education uh, and about our students. So deeply appreciative uh, for you to be here today. What we're going to do before our, um, well, almost graduates sign their letter of intent, um, we're going to uh, b briefly introduce each one. Um, it'll be embarrassing for them. They'll turn a little red and they can give a little wave, but at least you can put names to faces for those of you that don't know who is who. I do have them seated in order, so this should be really easy. Our first signee today is Amber Brown. Amber is the daughter of Darlene Brown and Jesse Brown and resides in the town of Dalton. Amber has chosen teaching as her preferred profession because she enjoys teaching younger students basic skills that they will take with them for the rest of their life. She also reflects on that stage of her life in a positive way and wants to be able to give kids the same experiences that she had. As principal, I have always found Amber to be a jovial and enjoyable member of our student body here at Wakona. She also has a pretty cool ferret. <laughs> um, Amber is planning on doing a half a year or possibly up to a year at BCC and then moving on to the College of Charleston. She plans to major in elementary education and hopes to be an elementary school teacher. Amber Brown, everybody. The ferret might go to Charleston, too, right? <laughs> Emma Blazik is the daughter of Jeffrey and Blazik and Barbara Gable, and she resides in Dalton. She chose teaching as her future profession because she has always invested her time into helping the youth in our community, whether it be through volunteer work, working with children ages seven through nine at the Dalton Youth Cheerleading Program, or at her job at her local elementary school helping children with their after school needs such as homework, tutoring, and aftercare. Sounds like you've pretty much already been teaching. So that's <laughs> uh, Emma loves to talk to the children and see their positive outlook on the world around them. She states that she wants to be the person to make an impact on their lives. Emma has certainly been a positive student leader here at our school and I have no doubt she will carry that over into her profession. 
She happens to be a founding member of Wakona's new Future Educators Club here, uh, as well. She will be attending Endicott College this fall and major in elementary education, and she hopes to one day become an elementary school teacher. Right. Emma Blaze. <laughs> Abby Cobb is the daughter of Kristen and Brian Cobb, and she lives in Dalton. Abby has chosen to become a teacher because she loves children, and she looks forward to watching them improve in their skills in the subject, in the subject area that she plans on teaching. She also looks forward to seeing her students understand a lesson after she explains it to them. In the business, we call that the aha moment. Okay, <laughs> so you'll have plenty of those down the road. I have found Abby to be a wonderful student here at Wakona, a student who is serious about her studies and a real taskmaster. Abby also happens to be a founding member of our Future Ed Educators Club here at Wakona. She will be attending MCLA this fall and plans to major in English and minor in education with the ultimate goal of being Wakona's next high school English teacher. Mm -hmm. No pressure, I threw the Wakona thing in. <laughs> you can go wherever you want. Holden Kotelnicki is the son of Barb and Joe Kotelnicki and lives here in Dalton. Holden has decided to go into teaching because he's always had a passion for sports and he likes to help instruct others in order to improve them athletically and would like to do that as a physical education teacher. I have personally found Holden to be a vocal and positive member of our Wakona baseball team and have no doubt that he has the goods to be a motivating physical education teacher. Holden will be attending Appalachian State University in the fall majoring in physical engine, uh, physical en education, excuse me, Holden Cotton. <laughs> so he's going the farthest so far. Why don't you go to Car Charleston? <laughs> Emily O'Neill, last but not least, is the daughter of Joe O'Neill and Jennifer O'Neill and hails from the great town of Cummington. <laughs> Emily states that she has always known that she has wanted to teach. She takes great pride in being able to push people outside of their comfort zone. She states that she finds fulfillment in watching people grow and shape their future. And she tries to be a role model and offer guidance to anyone in need. Aside from being from a great family in an equally great town, I have always been impressed with Emily's ability to connect with all sorts of different types of peers. And I have been particularly impressed with her ability to connect with those students, those of our students who have special needs. Emily will be attending Emmanuel College in Boston and plans on pursuing a degree in elementary education. Emily O'Neill. So at this time, you guys can all pick up your complimentary pens, but before you sign anything, you've got parents that want to take pictures, <laughs> and you've got I Berkshire's here that wants to take pictures. So if anyone needs to get into position, go right ahead and feel free to come up and take pictures, and then out on the count of three, you can sign it, okay? Does that sound good? All right. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, why don't you take those bad boys and hold them up? Perfect. All right, good job. You can keep the pens too. They're from Mrs. McAvoy, by the way. Those aren't just any pens. All right. Um, I'd like to take a moment before we close to welcome our superintendent, Leslie Blake Davis, up to say a few words, and then I'll have a, a couple closing remarks. So our superintendent, Leslie Blake Davis. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here to support our future educators. I am so honored to be a superintendent in a district that lifts up teaching as one of the most noble of professions. Guy Kowalski, a well-known speaker and author, is quoted as saying, if you have to put someone on a pedestal, put teachers. They are society's heroes. Your commitment to this profession inspires hope in all of us. Our dedication to our work as educators is driven by you through your passions, your hopes, and your dreams. I can think of no better calling than to know you are working toward the betterment of all through the education of society's youngest learners. Teaching is a craft. It is a lifelong commitment to serving humanity and working to our world where we all feel like we belong. In my experience as a lifelong educator, I can honestly say that I wake up every day 
knowing that I'm serving my community by upholding my belief that all students deserve to pursue what is most meaningful to them, and that through education we provide these opportunities. I am so proud of you today. I wish you the very best as you embark on this adventure, and I hope you stay in touch with us to share your journey. Thank you. All right. Um, before we close, I have a few other uh, things to mention before we close, but just some housekeeping items. Um, when we're done, um, if, if you folks would stick around for a picture with, with the kids, uh, that'd be good. We're going to do a few different pictures. Um, for you folks, I Berkshire's is here, so stick around because she might want to talk to you guys a little bit um, before she leaves. Uh, and of course, if you want to stick around and have some family pictures, that's totally fine as well. Um, and, uh, and then uh, we'll be, all be on our merry way. Um, before we close today, I do want to offer some practical advice uh, to all of our future educators who just committed to this work today. As you work your way through college and eventually your first year of teaching, uh, one of the things that I really want to emphasize is to not be afraid to ask for help. Um, one of the things that I found my first couple of years of teaching is that asking for help was almost like a warning sign to those that were the veterans around you. Not anymore. Ask for help. Please do so. It's not a sign of weakness. It's proof that you want to learn from your mistakes and grow. I would also ask that you impart the same approach with your students. Once you land your first job, I strongly advise you to find yourself a mentor as well, someone who is actually on time to faculty meetings <laughs> and engages with their colleagues. Run away from the other ones. <laughs> and when the time gets tough, the times get tough, and they will, that's the best time to remind yourself why you got into this profession in the first place. If it helps to remember back to a day like today, please do so. Keep reminding yourself that, the, uh, that as you work your way, keep reminding yourself of all of that as you work your way through your career. I'd like to thank everybody for coming today to witness this. At this time, we're going to ask our graduates, obviously, to stick around. We'll take some pictures. Um, and I truly appreciate our families for supporting our students, not only through the four years of Wakona, but through the 12 to 13 years of schooling that they're about to wrap up uh, before they go off and spend all of your money. So <laughs> congratulations to our families. I'm going to a round of applause. All right. Okay. Let's get some pictures. Do you, we'll follow you.